Hey everyone, my name is Julie and welcome to the Winning with Beckwith podcast. During each episode, you'll hear from our host and award-winning loan officer, Matt Beckwith. Matt will be interviewing his friends and colleagues to uncover life, leadership, and business principles to help us all win at the highest level. So get ready for this episode of Winning with Beckwith. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the Winning with Beckwith podcast. I'm so excited to get this podcast launched. And really, when I when I felt called to do this podcast about 18 months ago, to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be a lot easier. So I've learned that it's not that easy to launch a podcast, but this is episode one. And you started it, man. You're, you're rolling. You did it. We're doing it. We're recording it, which is a big step. So Thanks, as you can see, there's somebody here other than me. This is Jay Hughes, which I would consider Jay to be a, a good friend, a mentor. Yeah. He was actually my oh. first mortgage coach. Go ahead, Jay. Well, I don't know about mentor, but good friend. Good friend for sure. Uh, he was my first mortgage coach, so he did mentor me some. So we, have to, a, we have to go there. A, uh, it's been a mutually sharpening relationship for sure. But yeah. So do you remember when we started? Cause I, I was trying I to figure that out the other day. I do. What year was that? I think it was six years ago. And I remember, <clears throat> I remember you called me <clears throat> and I remember actually where I was standing because it was a really unique conversation. And uh, I took the call. I think you found me on, uh, I think you found me on my website actually. And um, you called and you you had a couple really specific questions, things that you wanted to like fix, I would say, in your business. And uh, I won't get into what those were, but like you were really yeah. specific. And then um, but uh, but you also talked about what was super important to you in your life, which you're going to talk about today in this episode. So like, yeah, I think it was five, six years ago. And um, yeah, it was really it yeah. was a really uh, it was a it was a that was a. Um, the, the beginning of our yeah, kind of working relationship and friendship. Yeah. So fun fact about Jay and I's relationship, we've never met in person. No, uh, we, we have a strictly Zoom relationship, which yeah. <laughs> I feel like is, is uh, not unique in today's world. But uh, we've never met in person. Jay lives in, in Boise, Idaho. And, uh, you know, we've never actually connected physically. It's going to happen, though. We're going to we're going to get that done in the next you know, 12 months, let's yeah. say six months, you know? Yeah. So when I was thinking about this episode one, I was really struggling with uh, what to talk about and what to bring to the table for, for the first episode. And so that was the main reason I asked Jay here because I felt like he could almost interview me in a way yeah. uh, to help me kind of express why I'm doing the podcast. And really it was, it was about 18 months ago. Uh, I felt if you want to call it a, a calling on my life, but I felt like I had been kind of selfish with the information that I had felt that I had been given, whether it was through other mentors, uh, through other leaders uh, throughout my career, uh, through the wisdom of, of God. Um, and I just felt like, why wasn't I sharing this with other people? Now, I'm still learning a lot, and uh, but I've also learned a lot over the past you know, 15 years or so while I've been in the mortgage business and while I've been scaling up the business. So really my passion was, it started with wanting to help other people. And when I realized that, I realized it just didn't apply to my business. So I've been able to, to scale up the mortgage business um, to a pretty high level um, over yeah. the last, you know, 10 plus years. Uh, but I, the same principles really apply to other businesses. And I just started to notice it a lot more, whether it was doctors, lawyers, uh, electricians, yeah. plumbers, a lot of the same principles that I've learned and I'm still learning uh, really applied to all types of businesses. And you so bet. I really just felt like the need to start sharing that with people because I feel like in our world today, and maybe it's just in the, in the US, but a lot of people's mind says, I need to hold on to that and not share it because I don't want my competition to find out about it. And I don't want them to know what I'm doing. And honestly, that was my mindset for a long time. Yeah. I just kind of straight. I just kind of stayed quiet. And I remember talking to you about that. Yeah. And so here I am wanting to share it in episode one. 
thanks Jay for, for coming on and, and really just being a good mentor and friend over the last five to six years. Yeah, you bet. And I think it helps. I think with uh, not necessarily that it's me, but having somebody on your episode one to kind of interview you and facilitate you, I think is helpful because um, then you don't have to just hop on and be a me monster and just, you know, Hey, let me tell you about me. And, you know, so like, as you and I were talking about have, you know, like launching your podcast, um, there's, you've got some really, really uh, your story, some of your background story, um, both getting into the business and then uh, kind of your um, that kind of turning po- uh, moment, that pivotal moment in your life that we'll talk about today, that story of uh, what do we call that? The out to lunch with the family story. Um, oh, it's, yeah, yeah, those yeah. Are, that was good. Those one. are things that are those are things that are so um, will be really meaningful to those of you that are listening today. And, um, you know, so as Matt and I were talking about uh, uh, the podcast, it's like those those things have to be a part of episode one to give people a flavor of like, what is this even about? And um, again, like, I, I think it's um, easier to have me or somebody asking you the questions rather than just yammering on. Um, so I think that will be, I think that'll be really good. So um, maybe let's, let's start, um, let's start with uh, your like intro into the mortgage business. And, and it was household finance. I believe that was the first. So, so maybe just right there, like, how did you, how did you fall into this business? How did it get your, its claws into you? Because once they're in, it's, the mortgage business doesn't usually let go of people, especially those who do really well. So like, yeah, why don't you share a little bit about household yeah. and kind of your journey in? Yeah. So it was uh, 2003. I was hired by household finance and really fell into the mortgage business. I think most people do. Uh, I didn't go to college and say, hey, uh, I want to be in the mortgage business. I was actually a history major in college, uh, which really applies to what I do today a lot. Yeah, um, but you know, not much business uh, training. I took a few business classes, but really in college, uh, wasn't focused on that. And so kind of fell into the job at household and really we're household. Both, we're both good. we're both finance company guys, too, by the way, which is really interesting. You know, I'm, I'm American General Finance, your household. Um, and so uh, I love that about your story, because and those of you who are in the mortgage business and who also came out of finance company like you get it. You get it. So anyway, keep going. Yeah. So I kind of think of my career in in two different sections right now. So uh, household finance was kind of the beginning in my intro to mortgages. So all we did there was uh, it was basically a refinance shop. That's all we did. Uh, Refinances uh, over the phone, straight up telemarketing, uh, old school style, just trying to get people to refinance. And so I started there, but really household was key because it provided with a, a lot of good training for me. I had a great boss. My first boss was so good. Her name was, it was Julia Brown. And I don't even know if she knows this, but what an impact she had on my career. Uh, just being my first uh, real manager at a real job. She was a great leader, probably still is. And she taught me a lot of things uh, from the very beginning. Um, but really the main thing she taught me was don't spend all this money you're making. Uh, which was great advice. And we could talk about on on a different episode. But, you know, when you get into the mortgage business, and you have success early, and especially pretty much right out of college, I'm totally derailing right now, but you could you could totally get caught up in the month to month and thinking that kind of stuff lasts forever. Don't get me wrong, you can you can build a good business. uh, But she was really influential and helping me um, become a good leader. And From there, I was promoted pretty quickly to a branch manager, and I was relocated from the Colonial Heights area of Virginia to uh, Virginia Beach, Norfolk area, where where I'm located now. And this was, uh, geez, that was 2006? No, 2004. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, so Household was, was where I started, and, you know, when I, when Household finally shut its doors... Um, so is that what made the, what, like the big piece of why you made the jump from household into mortgage, like a true mortgage bank or, or broker shop? Yeah. So yeah, they basically decided to shut down operations 
in the whole US. We were owned by a company called HSBC, which is a huge bank um, out of Hong Kong. And they just said, hey, we're not doing business in the US anymore from a mortgage lending standpoint. And that was shocking. Honestly, that really affected my thinking at the time because you put all this effort and you put all these hard hours into a company and you realize real quick that it's not about that. Like it's about the stockholders, which, you know, that's just how business is, honestly. But it made me want to control my own destiny. Yeah. And at first, I didn't even know if I was going to stay in the mortgage business because I had never seen the other side of it, which I call, you know, mortgage banking or street originating. And so if you don't know anything about the mortgage business, what that means is you are basically self-employed. You work for a company, but you are responsible for going out and getting your own business and coming up with your own marketing plan. And um, basically that's you're on your street, own. That's the street originator, meaning um, you're, you're beating the streets. You're walking the streets to generate your own business as opposed to working for like a, a big box bank, like a Chase or Wells Fargo or Bank of America, where as a loan officer, it's the same. You're doing the same transactions, but you're answering the phone, getting leads. So you made the transition into street origination. Yeah. So you're, you're a commission only. And, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that at the time. We only had two kids. We have four now. My wife wasn't working outside the home at the time. And so going from, you know, the household finance world where I had a comfortable living to, Hey, now you're going to be commission only. I think back to it now, I might've been slightly crazy uh, to make that step. Uh, And it was honestly just a total uh, leap of faith um, to do that. So when they shut down, I knew I didn't want to rely on the corporate world. And so I had other job opportunities to do sales and other businesses. And honestly, I just didn't like that because I felt like I had been kind of burnt by corporate America. And so I was like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to control my own destiny. Yeah. Very, very naive. And I'm going to build a business and street originating mortgage banking. And so that's how it all happened. And, and again, household was great for me because I had the good leadership and the training that they gave us. Um, That's how I transitioned. So that was 2009. I moved into true mortgage banking. Okay. So let's talk about like, so, oh, nine. Um, I mean, you make the move into street origination. And I don't know when the um, when that story that we're going to get to in a second, the out to lunch. What year did that out to lunch story happen before we get to it? Yeah, yeah you're good. Uh, so that had to be 2012. OK, so between between 2009 and 2012, let's talk about for a minute. Share. OK, so now. <laughs> Um, and I, you know, a lot of people probably who are listening to this, your story is probably similar. I know mine is, I'm, it was like finance company uh, where you're making, you know, at least you have some salary, maybe all salary. And then all of a sudden you go street origination, you're hundred percent commission from day one. And you got two or three little kids, you said. So you have a, this two or three year period where you got to build your own business. Um, and so I want you to talk about that for a minute, because that's going to lay the groundwork for that pivotal story when you go out to lunch with your family. So uh, what was that like that first three years? Uh, Challenging. Uh, You know, I I think that when you start any business, you hit the, you hit the ground or the ground running. I was going to say grind because you are grinding. And you kind of hit the ground too, kind of hard. I had to, and I, I felt this pressure of providing for my family. Yeah. And I would, um, I worked, I, working hard isn't even the right word. I didn't work smart, right? I worked really hard. Well, it's really be, hard to work smart in the early on because you don't know what you're doing. You don't, don't. You have no I, idea. I was trying to build the business. So it's just right. like any, any, any uh, craft or trade, whether you're an electrician and you're trying to build up your clients and you're out there and you're working hard and you're doing the actual work. So I'm pulling credit, which um, you know, you're running decisions, you're packaging the loans because you don't have an assistant to help you. Um, you're doing everything. And that first year, I knew how to do refinances for my time at household. I didn't have one real estate agent uh, referral partner that would send me business at that time. And so I did what I knew how to do to feed my family. And yep. so I just started doing refinances. So I purchased leads, started calling them. And just started doing refinances. And so honestly, 
it was a blessing kind of knowing that side of the business yeah. because even my first really month out of the gate, a household. Yeah, I did first month out of the gate. I think I closed 1.9 or somewhere around there uh, as a true street originator, not knowing what I was doing. But when I, the first company I was at street originating, I had another good mentor and boss, mm. which you'll kind of see that's um, a trend in my life. But this boss was teaching me how to go out and get referral business. At the same time I was doing refinances, I was also calling real estate agents mm -hmm. uh, and other people and marketing myself and building my brand as, as a loan officer. And so I started to, um, started to get some purchases towards the fall of that year, probably uh, August, September. And let me tell you, I tell this story a lot. When I got my first ratified contract, I can't even explain to you the feeling. You're like, I'm, I was just like, wow. Years of joy. I mean, it's just, and if you've ever done this, and it's just like any business, but when you get a ratified contract in our world, when I came from refinances, so when you do a refinance, you have to convince the customer that they need to refinance, number one, right? And number two, they have to use you. So you can convince them to refinance, but then they may use another lender. In the purchase world, these people are getting a loan unless they pay cash, but- um, I wouldn't have got the, the contract if they needed the, uh, the cat or if they had the cash to purchase the house. So they need a loan. Yeah. All I had to do was convince them to use me. Yeah. I was like, where have I been all these years? <laughs> I was like, this is great. I only have to do 50% of what I did before. Right. And I realized that when I got that contract, that the purchase business was, uh, the way to build a long-term business in our world. Uh, just because most of the time people are always going to be buying houses. And so, the refinances wasn't a long-term plan, but anyway, I started right away just calling agents during that time period. And, and honestly, I, I, I ran into a couple really good agents. Uh, some of them I still work with today uh, yeah. from that first year, uh, which is crazy when you think about it. Um, so one, but, one, one thing, Matt, I want to just point out real quick for those that are listening, this is so, I, and I know you'll agree with me. This is so critical um, because for loan officers that are listening, um, and if you're not in the mortgage industry, this will still translate. Like, you know, I just want to highlight Matt, like <clears throat> he had this, you know, had some training and educational background at household, jumps into street origination, which means 100% commission from day one. And so the focus was on, I got to feed my family. So I'm going to do what I know, which is refis. And then just in doing that, I know, like when you're pulling your own credit and and, uh, you know, you're doing everything. You're doing everything at that point, gathering conditions and uh, ordering your docs. And um, like, that's a great continuing education as well. Um, but, but notice how, I just love how you shared that your, your mentor had you engaging on the long-term aspect of the business at the same time. And so you started calling agents. And so for those of you that are listening, like you wanna grow your business, maybe you've been in the business for a year, Maybe you've been in the business 15 years. Um, and for those of you that have been in a long time, maybe your cycle goes up and down, like you're busy and then you're not. And so like, you're not busy, you go out and market and then it gets really busy. And so you stop marketing, your production goes down. Like what Matt's talking about is a big, big, big key to, to uh, scaling your business because it's like, you have to close transactions. And if you don't have an LOA, you don't have an assistant yet, you're responsible for all that. But you also have to have your eyes on, on future lead gen um, activities. And that's not easy to do. And it takes a lot of time, especially up front. But um, I just I want to make sure and highlight that for people because if you want to scale, you've got to be doing both. You got to be working on transactions, whether that's refis or purchases. Um, but you got to have your eyes on uh, like generating new business at all times. And you're 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 the you're one of the best that I have ever been around and coached at that aspect, like generating new business. Okay. So I cut you off. So keep going. Yeah. So I was, I was talking about the 2009 when I kind of got into it. And so really from 2009 to 2011 to, to the middle of 2012, I, I really had my priorities all out of whack. And that's one of the things I'm passionate about is because I learned what not to do in addition to what to do when you're scaling up a business. 
Um, but from that time period, I was working so hard and my number one priority was work and providing for my family. And I'm not saying that's a bad goal, right? That's a, but, it's important. It's super important and it's necessary, but it is, but my marriage was falling apart. I hardly mm-hmm. ever saw my kids. And honestly, uh, this is probably an understatement, but my wife should have left me years before this. Like mm. I was not a good husband and she was an amazing wife. And so 2012 hit, and I might be getting ahead of myself. Um, but Are when marriage almost fell apart, I honestly had a, there's no other way to explain this. I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus mm. and it really just changed. Honestly, I could say it changed me inside almost instantly. Not that I'm perfect today, not that I was perfect then, but it set me on this journey that I'm still on. Um, It made me a better husband, number one. It made me a better dad. And ever since then, I've just been on this journey of number one, I've been growing a business this whole time. And also I've been able to get my marriage right, and if it wasn't for, for having an amazing wife, well, first, if it wasn't for Jesus and then having an amazing wife, uh, my family would have been set down a different road and a different trajectory and a different legacy um, than what it was headed on. And I may have been successful in the, in the world's eyes, but internally I was a mess mm. and my, my marriage was a mess and you know, I almost get a little bit of choked up talking about it because when, when I think back to who I was before and talking to people that knew me then that know me now, they're the ones that are, were witnesses to the change. I mean, I can talk about it and, but the people that were there that are still around me, they saw the change and that, that set me down a different path. I was still growing the business, but I had to figure out how to grow the business and also be a good husband and be a good dad and have a good work-life balance while growing the business. Yeah. And yeah. Which is, <clears throat> yeah, which is, um, I mean, to call that like big or profound, even that I know is an understatement. And um, so I think let's transition. I think that's a good like turning point. I don't know if that, if you're, um, you know, this like encountering Jesus and and how that changed your life, if that, preceded this story like the out to lunch with your family story if it was right after you can share that but let's let's jump into that because as you've shared with me like i i just think for those that are listening this next story um that matt's going to share is like is just super important not only was it pivotal pivotal for him um but it i think it'll resonate with a lot of you if you're originating um you'll you'll, you'll get a feel for this. I know for me, it's like, I have my own story that's like this. And, um, and so to tee it up, I'm going to flip it to you, Matt. So like 2009 to 2012, you're, it's, you're trying to build a business. And like you said, it's like, you, you feel this pressure to support your family. And that's a good thing. I mean, you do need to support your family. So it's, but like the way you were describing it is it became, you elevated that to a level of importance that it was too high. It was too important. It was the most important thing. Um, And so you're working really, really hard and your priorities are out of whack. And then let's talk about what happened. Uh, You tee that up beautifully, by the way. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So, and really this is in our world and Jay, you're in our, our world, real estate agents and, and loan originators, but really this does apply to all businesses because customers, yeah, customers need us a lot of times um, on the weekends, at night. And prior to this, I would literally drop everything um, in order to, to help service somebody. And I'm not saying customer service is not important. It is. So we get to uh, this point and I'm trying to get my life back together. And I am sitting out to lunch with the family. I believe it was Buffalo Wild Wings. My kids used to Love that place. Gotta love it. Haven't been there in a while. I'm sure it's still good, but we're sitting there for lunch. It's a Saturday afternoon. Okay. And just really enjoying it. I get a text from a real estate agent and amazing real estate agent. And she sends me a text and she says, 
hey, I have a client I need you to call right now. They need to talk right now. They want to put an offer on the house. The sense of urgency is there immediate. So prior to this moment, I would have stopped what I was doing, eating lunch with the family, ran out to my car, got all the customer's information, pulled the credit, did the app. And that probably would take me 30 minutes. All right. I don't know if you've ever been out to lunch with your family, but 30 minutes is pretty much the whole time, maybe an hour. But (laughs) so I would have been missing the whole lunch with the family. And so I text this agent back and I said, hey, I can't do it, but I can do it in about two hours. I'm having lunch with the family. And so they responded back and said, "Okay, well, if you don't do it, I'm going to send it to another lender. Yeah. So again, let me set the stage. So if you're an electrician and your client says, if you don't do this now, I'm going to find another electrician. I'm moving on to the next one. And we all find ourselves in that position. And so the old Matt would have said, okay, I would have given up on that. Great idea, Matt. Nice try. Matt, like you're out, you know, it's like this one way to look at it. It's how I used to look at it. You're out to lunch with your family. The only way that you can go out to lunch with your family and to feed them is to earn the money to pay for that lunch. That's what you do. I used to be like, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Well, my mindset used to be like, okay, well, this lead is worth X amount of dollars. Right. So sorry, babe, I got to go make this money. Okay. Which is exactly what you were describing. It's like, it's, it's now elevating that to a level of importance. That's, that's now more important than your wife, your kids, lunch with the family. But, but every single person I would guess, everybody listening has been there where you, that conflict is there. And it's like, oh my gosh, I can, I, I may be saying no to $4,000 or a hundred dollars or whatever it is in your world <clears throat> or, or, or I'm going to protect this time with my family. But it's like, if I say no to that lead and I do that enough, am I going to have enough money to take my family out to lunch? Like that's the conflict. And that's very, very real. And that's why I love this story. And you're going to keep going because you and I are massively aligned right here. Um, so keep going. Yeah. So um, she, the agent, you know, again says, okay, well, I'm going to basically give your this business to somebody else. Yeah. And so I said, okay, I understand. And that was the end of that conversation and finish out my weekend, have a great weekend with the family. And Monday rolls around and get a call from this agent. Hey, Matt. Hey, uh, remember that customer I wanted you to call on Saturday and I had to send it over to the different lender. I'm like, yeah. She I says, remember. Yeah, I remember for sure. She says, yeah, well, they did get them pre-approved and they wrote a contract and they got ratified. So they're buying that house, but they don't like that other lender. Can you call them right now and get them pre-approved and go ahead and take the loan over? And that's when it hit me that, and really I call it the Chick-fil-A mindset. So Chick-fil-A is closed on Sundays. Everybody knows their story that they're closed on Sundays and they always... When they're closed on Sundays, if you want a chicken sandwich, you're going somewhere else if you want a chicken sandwich, right? Or because you only want a Chick-fil-A sandwich. You're coming back on Monday. You're coming back on Monday. And so that's when it hit me where I was like, oh, wait a second. I offer what I do for, for the agents I work with and the customers that we work with is so good Yep. That they're coming back to me on Monday. And it doesn't mean that you don't work on the weekends. And I'm not saying that because there's times where things need to be done, but you have to set boundaries when and when you can't work that and have other, you can have other people in place. And there's a lot of different strategies to work around that, which we'll get into later, but not today, but that's probably a whole episode, but yeah, it is. We can, (laughs) the, the point and what Jay is talking about here is, I realized that the service I provide and the business I do was, was good enough that I'm going to get that client, whether it's Sunday, whether it's Saturday, um, they're going to come around on Monday. And that really set me down a whole new path uh, that day going forward. Thanks for checking out part one of Matt's conversation with Jay Hughes. Tune in next time for part two. This is Winning with Beckwith.